Hey everyone, back in patch 1.6 I made a prediction video looking at what I thought the upcoming buffs, nerf and adjustments were going to be and I'm pleased to say that a lot of predictions in that video are actually correct. With the upcoming patch I thought it would be a great chance to have another look at what I think the next balance patch will look like, so this is patch 1.10 preview predictions. Please note that this is actually going to be patch 1.10 as Riot are missing out patch 1.9. All the suggestions made are from Bomber TV, using his personal experience of the meta game, as well as his previous knowledge of game theory from personal studies and him being a pro in several other card games. He's been analysing stats thanks to Mobra Analytics, in particular by taking a look at the highest popular run rates for cards to nerf, whilst lowest run rates and or low popularity for buffs. First up, I'm going to discuss my ideas for a Lee Sin rework, which has been hinted by Riot. So I think they should change his cost from 6 to 5, and stats from 3 6 and 4 7 to 3 5 and 5 5. The numbers spells needed to level him up I think will be changed from 7 to 8, and I think he will get the challenger keyword when he levels up, and the leveled up text should change to give me barrier when you cast a spell. If I get Barrier, I cast Dragon's Rage on an enemy I'm in combat with. So this is a lot to take in, but Riot have hinted that we would get a rework which would bring him online sooner, and therefore a reduction in cost. The rest of the change is to have a better payoff once you get him to level up, which I think you should make slightly harder given the high reward by levelling him up. The change on his leveled up form would make it easier for him to have an impact on the game, both offensively and defensively, and would make his base form without spell trigger still able to challenge units and impact the board. This is a very risky change, but overall a pretty big buff. Lee Sin has been underperforming for quite a while now, so this change could make him viable, but without any way to test him out, I can't really tell if this would be too good, but for sure it would make for some interesting plays. So my first nerf I'm going to propose is for Riptide Rex, and the change would be it doesn't damage the Nexus if a unit is dead or gone. This card is pretty tricky to balance, as it's very powerful of course, but it's also needed for a piece of so many different archetypes, meaning that touching it could break the meta. I feel like this change is one of the riskiest, and just increasing its cost or reducing its stats a bit could do the trick. I wanted to take a risk and try something a little bit different because I feel the problem lies in the effect rather than other parts of the card. The burn potential from this effect or Nexus capability damaging through Swain triggers are far too powerful. This card doesn't need additional Nexus damaging triggers as the plunder would already be activated if this effect is being activated in the first place. The additional damage the Nexus part was probably added to make it feel less bad for every missed shot on an already dead unit, but at the end it was simply revealed to be too strong and we should probably get rid of it. Also, it'd even be more thematically fitting in given the theme of the random nature of a cannon barrage in real life. My proposed nerf for the Leviathan is to change it from one dealing damage three times to just dealing three damage. Swain Twisted Fate has been a strong contender for quite a while now, and is a deck that's always lurking in the dark, waiting to re-emerge in the right meta, as it's faster than other conventional control decks, and has all the removal packages provided by Buildwater, and Noxus is pretty strong against aggro strategies in general. The only bad matchup for this deck is a mid-range deck, which gets annihilated by the Leviathan plus Swain. If Swain is already in play, after you play the Leviathan, then either they have to go hard single target removal, which is basically vengeance at that moment in the metagame, or you can hardly recover from that. Swain and the Leviathan takes away three units from the board, while also providing a natural win condition given the ticking clock nature of the Leviathan. With this change it would still be a win condition, but it would only be one stun out of the game, giving more room for counterplay and not feeling as oppressive as it currently is. So I think Genevieve Elmhart should have a change from 5-5 to form 4. Genevieve has been a staple for far too long in both scout decks and Demetia decks in general. She provides too much versatility, being a wide buffer, a scout, a challenger and a great body in general. More often than not you can do a 2 for 1, even not, if not more, 
and you get the privilege of choosing who to remove, making her become a double removal in a single card, which could leave behind a body for further more trades in the future. Reducing her stats would make her a worse body in general, while still being a solid option for both scout dedicated decks, and even with this change it wouldn't reduce her ability too much, which is a good thing given that scout has been in the meta for quite a while. Captain Farron, I think, should have his ability change to create only two decimates instead of three. Captain Farron is currently too strong at finishing. Aggro decks use him like a bomb to finish off the game for an insane amount of reach. You just need to have deal eight damage in the early turns, and you've already won if you manage to reach turn eight. Against aggro decks, it's harder as you still need to gather enough mana to cast all that burn and hitting the target 8 Nexus Health to then close the game out with Captain Farron's 2 Decimates with his new effect. Whilst well, it's much easier to reduce them to 12 like it currently is with obviously the 3 Decimates you'd get before. Remember he's already an 8-8 with Overwhelm which also draws 3 cards which are good enough to be run in a main deck so this will tone down the pirate aggro deck there's a lot of at the moment and burn in general. So I also think Ranger's Resolve should be changed from a burst spell to a fast spell so this is a minor change, but still a nerf nevertheless. With this nerf in speed, it would be easier to counter Ranger's Resolve. If played proactively, let's say on an attack to get value trades on blockers, you could remove or play an AoE before Ranger's Resolve happens. While if played to counter AoE, you could play another one on top of Ranger's Resolve to let it happen before it resolves, or at least remove something with a ping if not the whole board. Overall, Ranger's Resolve is a very powerful tool, which is very strong on wide boards as it counters AoE, which is way too cheap and at the moment it's uncountable. I think increasing its cost would kill the card, as it would be at least doubling the cost from 1 to 2, which is a way too big nerf for this kind of card. So instead, reducing its speed is something that would tone it down just a little bit and also make it more open to counterplay, which is always a good thing for this game in general. So for a post, I also think it should be changed from a burst spell to a fast spell. For similar reasons to Ranger's Resolve, currently Repost is being used in both barrier heavy decks like Shen Lulu and also in scout decks to take advantage of the double attack potential from scouts, therefore giving free attack two times. Making a fast spell would make it much more risky to open attacks than casting this buff right away. Therefore, a change in speed would make the game much more responsive and basically like uh, Ranger's Resolve, it would give a chance for counterplay and it make it more risk reward based promoting the skill and overall kind of making the game a lot more strategical and I think in my opinion, fun. So Petty Officer I think should be changed from 3-2 to 3-1. Petty Officer is a great card, so great that on the scout list which run Vanguard Bannerman, it's often run without caring about its allegiance drawback and it's the, obviously it's going to be the only build water card in this deck except for Misfortune which obviously needs to be included as she defines the R-type. So this is already a symptom of an OP card. This card is very hard to balance as there's also already Dreadway Deckhand so making it a 2-2 would feel too similar to her and the one more mana would be for the verticility and mainly the one drop effect. I feel like making him a free one instead would keep him more in line with his aggressive nature making him more vulnerable to pings, AoEs, chump blocks, all those kind of things and overall reducing its power level which is way above the kind of roof for this basically costed card. Brightsteel Protector I think should be changed from 3-2 two to 2-2. Two two. Brightsteel Protector is a very powerful and versatile card and currently used in scout and various strategies as a way to aid challengers. Reducing a stat line would make it more desirable for an aggressive body and only be chosen by dedicated barrier themed decks while still being able to provide a nice option for decks it features in, but providing less aggression and trade potential which obviously isn't the main purpose of this card. House Spider I think should be changed from 2-2 to 2-1. Currently House Spider is being run in Spider Burn decks as well as many variations of Swain TF or Discard Aggro. It's way too versatile as a natural spider synergy card, a wide summary of both value and control decks to chump block and put a presence early on the board to complete against aggro, whilst also being a viable option against aggro strategies which like to go wide like discard burn. It also offers a way to trade 2 for 1, the 1-1 one, one trading with their 1 drops and a 2-2 two, two trading with the 2 drops. 
Overall reducing the health to one would preserve the kind of theme of the card in these aspects, but would make it this unit much more punishable by paying an AoE, so think cards like Make It Rain, turning it down into a not so interesting card by taking away the two drop slot, and preventing much more interesting options and strategies that you'd like to see in this two drop. You obviously don't want to be seeing the same card at the same stage in every single type of deck. So would it still be great against wide synergies and spider strategies though? I don't know. But typically I don't care about spiders having high health, so I think it would still be fine even with this nerf. So now I want to look at some buffs, and first up is Hecarim. So I think his leveled up effect should be changed so ephemeral allies don't die at the end of the turn. Now hear me out. Hecarim and the ephemeral art type in general has been underperforming for quite a while now. So this would be a very big buff. But it would make it a much more interesting champion as well, as making him more them thematically. So having all those spirits, etc., lingering around instead of disappearing. This would shake things up quite a lot and it would give him a better incentive for playing the ephemeral archetype in general. I can't really say if this would make him too strong about testing, but we could always tweak stats or the cost afterwards. But what we need is a champion to be much more interesting, and this change would definitely spice things up. I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this, because some may think it's too powerful, some may think it's interesting. Next up's Tarek, and I think his keyword should be changed so it grants tough instead of giving, therefore making the effect last more than one turn. So many new champions need minor buffs, but Bomber feels Tarek needs it the most, and it may be a case that he's underperforming because the meta is not letting strategies resolving around him basically be free. So this is a small but important change that could make him more interesting and make him more in line with the whole kind of grant mechanic which characterises the Targum region generally. Next up's Jai Muradada. I can't even say that name. Uh, and I want to change his ability so when a spell is cast on me, draw one. This rewording from the effect trigger would make him activate more often, as well as making him easier to target him, as things like copied spell from Tarek would activate his effect, even though I'm not actually quite sure if that's already uh, the case, so anyone please comment if that is already the case. Um, this would make him a better body to buff, and even if he gets removed, you still draw a card off that removal, making him better as a standalone. So Claw of the Dragons I think should change to cost from 2 to 3, but the stats should change from 3-2 to 3-3. Three, three. And additionally, Sonic Wave should be changed to cost from 2 to 1. So both of these changes are to support the new rise of Lee Sin, which again has been hinted in the last patch. The changes to Claws of the Dragon will make casting spells early have a better payoff, in the form of a better free body, whilst in the increase in cost to avoid aggro decks running her just because it would be a 2 mana, 3-3 free free vanilla body, which should still be fine, but I think with the aggro decks it's better to be safe than sorry. So for Sonic Wave, it's comparable to single combat, both relying on having a body on the board to remove another unit, but single combat has the advantage of giving you the option to be played on attack or defence and in response to removal, reducing the cost of Sonic Wave will make it much more in line with single combat, trading the responsiveness and the punish of removal for the additional plus two attack if needed, or the one mana discount, as well as some synergies with spell based cards like Claws of the Dragon. So those changes could be the birth of new spells based in this aggro strategy outside of the Lee Sin synergies, which would be really interesting in my opinion as this definitely needs more attention from Riot. And there you go guys, I bet a lot of you are expecting to see Aurelian Soul. The truth is, now that people have got over the initial hype of Celestial cards, people have figured out how to counter him, and as a result, his win rate currently is close to 50%, which I guess is a sign of a relatively balanced card. Countering this, yes, a meta shouldn't revolve around beating a certain deck, so further down the line I would expect adjustments in one way or another, as a meta shouldn't be around just trying to basically take down Aurelian Salt, as that is a really boring card game. What buffs and nerfs are you expecting in patch 1.10? Massive shout out to Bomber TV once again for his contribution to the card balance suggestions. Thank you for watching guys, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.